How does navigate on autopilot work in infamous LA rush hour traffic? We'll find out. Hi everyone, this is Joy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing, I guess, the part three review on the latest 42.3 software update that I received last week, but especially focusing on the navigate on autopilot feature to give you a deeper look into how this works and if it makes sense for me to use it on my daily commute. I decided to test it out in the infamous LA rush hour traffic because you know, people in LA, we kind of drive aggressively and uh, a lot of times when you signal for lane changes, people just won't let you through and I think guilty when I'm in a hurry. So I wanted to see if nav on autopilot with Mad Max mode would be practical and useful for me to turn on on my daily commute. So keep watching. Max mode on just so that you know but it's not suggesting lane change to the faster lane to my left. It's probably because my interchange is coming up in less than a mile. And you can see there's a solid blue line in front of me trailing this semi right in front of me. And my steering distance or following distance is set at two seconds for slower traffic. But if I'm in more free-flowing traffic, I would set it to three seconds instead for safety reasons. It's detecting motorists. In 1,000 feet, take exit 53 B on the right onto Interstate 10 West to Santa Monica. All right, let's see how well it takes this interchange. change exit perfectly and it's not trying to go to that center divider either and it's signaling again without me prompting and there's uh, a split and it's decided to go to the right lane and signal on its own us with the lane merging let's see if it might be confused well, today's a little better because there are less cars at this merging point, but typically I would have a lot more. I was always curious how it would handle the merging because I've always had to take it off of autopilot. And now we are running to more traffic. Let's see if Matt Max is going to suggest, which it is. So I'm going to signal and see when it's going to finally be able to merge over to that lane. And there are cars coming up behind me. And again, Mad Max mode is not to change lanes faster. Nope, and it, nope, it doesn't wanna do that. Yeah, this is kind of frustrating. I may have to just go ahead and do it because it keeps not wanting to go there, detecting other cars behind me or coming up to me and it's not changing the lane fast enough to take into effect. So I'm going to put it back on. And now it's detecting that the lane next to me to the left is traveling a little faster so I am going to merge over according to the suggestion. Very busy road this morning. Now the left lane is traveling faster again, so I'm wondering if it's going to make that suggestion for me to switch over or it's going to stay this lane because my exit is coming up in less than two miles. No, I'm still stuck in this slower traffic. 
blue line actually extends beyond the car in front of me. It's like it can detect two cars before me and the following speed. I thought it was really interesting. A prompt just came up telling me to anticipate lane change because I'm about to get off this ramp, get off this freeway. So let's see if it's going to tell me. In one mile, take exit 1B on the way toward California 1 South, Lincoln Boulevard. We're going to pass this car first and then follow the suggestion. I'm going to actually put my hand here and see if uh, it's going to signal on its own when taking that exit ramp. That's how nav on autopilot works in rush hour traffic. There you have it. It's probably not practical for me to use nav on autopilot on my commute just because when I try to do lane changes, people won't let me through and then my car keeps slowing down and stalling and people behind me will get impatient thinking something is wrong with this car or this Asian woman is crazy and she doesn't know how to drive. But I must say that this uh, navigate on autopilot feature is kind of like GPS on steroid, if you will because it not only gives you guidance but it actually tells you where to go and makes your car, well, not automatically, but suggesting the lane changes and does the signaling for you. So I would still use it on longer drive, but not on my commute and definitely not in rush hour traffic. I will, however, continue to use just the autopilot and auto steering in rush hour traffic just because I don't have to keep pressing <laughs> on the acceleration and the brake all the time and the car just follows the car in front of me at a safe distance and I don't have to be so stressed out about it. I hope you found this video informational and that it has given you some insights into whether or not you should use Navigate on Autopilot when it makes sense to turn it on and when it doesn't really make sense to use it. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so and ring that bell so that when I publish a new video, you'll get a notification right away. If you enjoyed what I had to share, give it a like, share this with your friends, make comments down below, ask me questions or interact with me, and I will see you later.